G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, 11 to 25, um, the stew's a bit late this morning, it's half past 10, um, and often I get the stew done early in the morning, but just been busy today, um, but it's windy, and the shed rattles, I've got all the doors wedged so they don't rattle too much while the stew's being filmed, and um, yeah, <laughs> we'll just go from there, but yeah, Got my old buddy ratty old work shirts on. I probably should have put a tidier shirt on, but anyway, you're not here to look at me bloody shirt, are you? <laughs> so, the, um, it's sort of nice weather. Where the Bundy Bear shed is here now, um, we're sheltered from the breeze, but up at the house, um, yeah, it's, it's quite windy. But um, we sort of, I, I covered last week that I was gonna set up an office at the garage, and it's just a single garage at the side of the house and just so we got the better Wi-Fi and all that. And um, we're just setting up there. So um, up there this morning, there's a bit going on. We've got an air conditioner man, John, from Ultra Air. He's, um, he always does our air conditioning work. So he's fitting a three and a half kilowatt air con in the office. And then um, we've got the Sparkies up there that are running the power to that. And in the whole office, there was one power point right near the roller door at the front there. So. Um, we've been running leads and power boards to run computers and screens and all that sort of thing. So, um, so we, we're getting them. They're going to put a little thing in with four um, power points there. So, you know, the freezer can have its own and computers can have its own. And we're not playing with those um, those little piggyback boards so much. So, um, yeah, so they're up there at the moment. So I thought I'd better get out of there and come back up here and um, do, get the stew done because once they're gone, I'll have to get it edited today, uploaded today, and ready for release in the morning, because in the morning, um, we're heading up to the club shed for, yeah, I've got to pick Alan up at nine o'clock, and um, we're going to run up there, and we've just got to work out what we want for mezzanine and things like that, so we're going to do that. Um, Wednesdays, I'll be at work. Thursday, I'll be at work. I've probably got to get in Thursday sometime and drop the club engine off and perhaps a tractor, perhaps Thursday afternoon. And Friday and Saturday in town here is Agro Trend. So um, I've offered the Queensland Tractor Spares gazebo in the tractor display just to give the tractor bloke somewhere to sit. And so we'll have to get that up Thursday evening. And, um, but yeah, whether I get there Friday or not, I just don't know, we've got stuff happening. So we'll just see, see how we go there. Um, we've been having a big shed clean up. Oh, this morning I've been, this morning I've been making these pipes. Now these pipes are, they're the lower radiator hose pipes for the 65s and we couldn't buy some a while back so we get the um, local exhaust place to weld them up for us and so they weld them up then they're too long and they're too long and I have to bring them home on the bandsaw and chop them back to size, um, deburr them, um, paint them. That's, um, that's a bit of CRC prep it on those things. So I've got five of them done this morning. Um, yeah, while the aircon blokes have been up the front there. So <laughs> I sort of don't like hanging around annoying them. We've had the Jehovah's Witnesses in this morning to keep us on the straight and narrow so they can piss off. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, it's... Um, yeah, it's just not a bad day all, all around. Um, I had my mate Pomona Rick come up over the weekend. He'd been camping down Coona, um, which is Burham National Park in the Kankuna camping section. And they'd been down there for 10 days having a camp. And um, yeah, we asked them if they'd like to come and have a visit. So they come and visited and I said, well, I've got to put your bloody work. So, um, and it was very handy. Um, with Rick here helping me and we had the forklift going and. Um, things like that. It just we got so much done. Um, I, I had the press all done and shifted by the time they come here on Friday. Um, I had my workbench over there. The workbench it was over in the wood section. Um, I had the folder and all that in place. But um, Rick gave us a hand to bring all the toolboxes from up the little shipping container machine shop. We've got the lathe here now that needs a wash and a service. We've got the mill here now. We've got three drill presses in a row. You might see a toolbox here. That's a big new 53 inch Renegade toolbox. Um, 
I was going to, <laughs> well, we shuffled the shed around and we sat looking a fair bit and had a chat and we decided that to have the, the filming area from that toolbox to there, they have this bench that's got shit all over it. But um, they have that bench as a filming area because we have good lights working sort of thing. Um, it mightn't be bad. And actually, while I'm talking to you, I've got one light on here and the main light above me here. I haven't got the bloody thing on today, but anyway. We, we've started the stew, so it's just going to have to get and sort out, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we have two 53-inch toolboxes here. Now, the sound box, the 53-inch the toolbox bottom, bottom um, the, the trolley part that I had over, over to my left here, um, it's over to my right near the hoist now, and we're going to run a lead down along and, and power that up with an extension lead. Um, but yeah, every, every flat surface in the shed at the moment has shit on it. Um, we've shifted toolboxes around, we've got the tool cutter and grinder there. And, um, but yeah, everything, you, you pick stuff up off the floor and you, you put it in a box. Where am I going to put that? I'll just chuck it there for the moment and chuck it there for the moment. So the whole place looks like a bomb went off still. <laughs> Pardon me, but it is looking way better. Um, so far we've been able to keep everything up off the floor so there's a gap. So much the, the oh, sounds like the phone's ringing. Yeah, <laughs> back again. Um, yeah, one of the club members, Nev Cayley, he's, um, he's looking for a bit of help to get some tractors into agro trend. Um, but yeah, I sort of can't really help just at the moment. Um, yeah, heading up to Mullet Creek tomorrow for the morning. But um, yeah, just, just got stuff going on. So, pardon me. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I got no idea what I'm bloody talking about. Probably the clean-up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I will go handheld and um, have a bit of a walk around. Um, yeah, the sheds. <laughs> look, the sheds looking pretty good, and like I say, we can. We're at the stage where um, we're not far off being able to pressure clean the floor, and we've got everything up off, everything sitting up off the ground a bit, so we can blow under with air and pressure clean and all that and keep it clean. I used to have it like that, but I just become a grubby bugger as I got older. So <laughs> um, I don't know how that happens. But um, I, bought, I bought some more shelving brackets like the ones I showed last week and we've actually sheeted along the wall until we run out of iron. And I thought I had a bit more, but anyway, some of it had big cuts out of it, so it wasn't really suitable for what we wanted to do. But um, yeah, behind the lathe, I've got to put a shelf. I've, I've got to actually get a bit of truck wash and clean the iron and look that'll be okay I can just give that a bit of a bit of a bougie and um, the put a shelf up the back for all the quick change tool posts and um, I've, I've got a bit of wood there I'm going to cut out of old stands and um, the other day Jude and I went to Bunnings and we bought a, um, a heap of black paint so we can paint the paint the boards black soak it into the pine boards and paint them black and they'll look the same as the as the um, brackets so That'll be okay, it'll be a good thing. But um, yeah, the mill, we brought the mill and the lathe up, but they both need a good clean. I'm, I'm sort of looking forward to doing the clean up on them. That'll, that'll be okay. Um, the drill presses are there. Um, the black tool boxes are mainly machine tools, as in, um, you know, I've got the indexing head there, the rotary table there, um, a lot of lathe tools, you know. Um, face mills and, and things like that. In that, um, some of the ratchets and the hand tools from over on this red toolbox, pliers and that that I've had over here, um, I'm actually going to find space in those black boxes because that's where the main workbench is. And I'll find space over there for them. And what the idea is, is all the red stuff, um, I think there's 50 something drawers there now, um, we're going to try and put tractor parts and um, consumables, you know, circ clips, um, grease nipples, um, you know, ignition switches for tractors, and um, you, you would not believe the stuff I have. <laughs> We've, uh, I've, been, I've been grabbing it from all areas around the shed recently, in the last week or so, and um, grabbing it from everywhere and putting it all on one pallet up the back. Well, we've got too much for one pallet now, so we're onto the second pallet, and it's just a big heap of stuff. And, I mean, you know, like tractor kingpins and hubs and all sorts of stuff. So, um, so all the tractor parts are going to get all organised, as in um, 
you know, wheel studs. We'll have a drawer with wheel studs and wheel nuts and ignition switches and um, fuel taps and things like that. We're going to sort it out, but each drawer is going to have its own number. And once we get them all settled in, we'll go through and we'll set up an Excel spreadsheet. So um, if I can look up a Sparex number, I can do a search for that number and that'll tell me to look in drawer 20. You should have one of them. Don't go and buy one. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the vice, the vice from up the front I've just brought down on, and I'm going to bolt that to the front bench there. Um, I think this vice will do here just with the soft jaws in it. Um, I do have a swivel vice that turns up and down round about um, with swivel jaws, uh, with soft jaws as well with aluminium in it. And I was thinking perhaps on the film and thinking it might be handy to get the right angle of the dangle or something. But anyway, look, we'll see. Um, yeah, the box that was there with the blue toolbox on, it's just over there now with the vice. And the 65's coming in here. And just to bind the camera there, the 135 multi-power's going in there. And um, we're just going to have two tractors here in the main work bays. And um, yeah, we're just going to have to soldier on with those and get them done. Um, we're not going to start anything else if we can. We're just going to um, sort them out and get them as far as we can. Even if I can get the 65 up to a stage where I've got the final drives and brakes done and um, painted and yeah then I can work on panels and things like that but at the moment I've got everything spread around the bloody paddock outside and all, <laughs> all the bloody um, all the jack stands and things. Like You take them outside and you have a look and you think, oh, geez, that's dirty, so you pressure clean them. So, you know, all the drill presses have had a pressure clean and clean on the way up. Um, you know, just degrees and pressure clean and, and you, everything just gets dusty. It's a dusty environment, so anyway. But look, I'll go handheld. I'll take you for a bit of a walk around and try and explain what we're doing. I'll try not to trip over shit. Um, I've, I've cleared a bit of stuff out of the way here it's just so I can get the camera there. <laughs> I've got a fridge over there that's a bloody nuisance. I don't know where or why, what we're going to do with that. Um, the fridge I was going to get rid of out the back there, it's going to stay now. It's sort of worked into the, worked into the plan. So, um, but look, I'll go handheld and we'll have a bit of a look, eh? Okay, now that's that opening in the hoist, that's the sound bench. Now, and like I say, everything's got rubbish all over it, but that's just how it has to be for the moment. So we've got to run power down there to run the um, charging station. That's where I charge cameras, phones, um, microphones and all that sort of stuff over there and we do have um, like we do have wheel nuts and um, lynch pins and uh, all sorts of linkage stuff in there um, injection pump stuff steering so kingpin rubbers ball joint rubbers 65 chrome for under the steering column, steering bushes for inside the steering box. So, and they're just bits of hydraulic stuff, little discs I've made and um, things I've bought off old blokes, you know, when I've bought them out and I've, they just have a heap of o, random O-rings and backup washers and all that sort of thing. So, so we've sort of started off there, then this other toolbox here, that's the one that has the kits and the sockets and that in it at the moment. Um, we'll probably do something at the top there yet. Um, that's not how I want it, <laughs> with the kid's car there and all that. Um, but that's okay. Now, this bench here, that's where we do most of our filming. Um, it just sort of lends itself to that. So that has to be all tidied up. I have shifted a few things around and it is getting tidier. <laughs> you wouldn't, no, I know, it doesn't look like it, but it is. Um, then next to that, there's the new toolbox I bought and I did a nice CRC display up there. I found every can of CRC I had within Kui and put up there. There's nothing else in that at the moment though. Um, Renegade Tools had them on special last week. Um, I think it was 250 off the bottom box and 150 off the top one, something like that. But the box that used to be there, it's over here now um, with junk on it again. And that's where my big ring spanners go. And that used to be stuff for the press, you know, little discs and all that. So I might try and get that closer to the press. And the injector tester, um, it can live on the edge of that bench there now. 
so in its tin cover. And that's a great place for it. Um, I used to have it on top of a fridge and I had to lift it down and it was a, it was a hassle. So um, I can just slide it forward onto that desk now and away we go. Um, we've got a bin there. That's, this is the box that I, squeal, I, I sort of push around to wherever I'm working at the time. Um, that's just a little renegade trolley. Look, it's a little beauty. Um, I use it a lot. Now the little D bit grinder, it's up there on top of the snap-on um, the snap-on box and see we've got brooms and shit everywhere and yeah that's carbide tips and that, that's all to do with machining really most of that then as we come along they're all the black toolboxes out of the out of the shipping container and oh the the magneto charger it's I thought I'd put it up there it's easy to slide it onto that um, but yeah, so I, I can have all the tools there, the lathe's just there, and the workbench that you can't fit anything on is up through here. And I've put the welding bench there, I've put the um, belt sander around there, and the 50 tonne press, the 6 tonne press, and the little 3 tonne arbor press, they're all together there. So. And this little bench where I had the wood, we've turned it into a paint bench. And I've still got to sort that out yet. But, so yeah, once we come down the alley there, we've got the lathe. Um, it just needs a bit of a tidy up. All the quick change tool posts and everything just ended up there for the moment. So this is where we're gonna, we sheeted this bit here. And that's not rust, that's just a bit of stain on the, on the iron, it does come off. So that's a little rack I made years ago just to hold centres and that on the end of the lathe. Um, but yeah, the lathe, look, it's not too bad, but it does need a really good clean up. It's, it's not the best there. Now the mill, the mill's sitting here with a box full of junk on it. <laughs> it's, it's quite grubby. Um, look down there, it's quite grubby. And then we have the three drill presses coming along here the MIG welder, um, yeah, a little wire brush. I'm not sure that's gonna stay there yet, we don't know. But um, yeah, I've got the thinners and the battery chargers and the air tools and all that sitting up the back there. So so when you turn around from here, that's, that's up towards the door. So I've got like a five foot gap through there. So that should be okay. Then when we look over to the back there, um, where the tripod and that is, the 65, we've got it swinging on the gantry there and out of the way, so it'll come back in through here. And then the 135, it'll go about where the forklift is. And so between the John Deere tractor over there and here, um, probably that line in the concrete down there, um, that'll be our two main working bays. And it gives us plenty of room to do that, and it gives us room, um, it will give us room behind them to bring stuff in and out and um, yeah, we'll be able to get a forklift in the back. So, so when we swing around, yeah, that's just a bit of a, bit of a look around. That's the fridge I'm not sure about yet. So yeah, that's the wheel roller and the hand shear and the finger brake. So, so that line there, that, that shed frame, that's halfway through the shed. So if I stand on that, all in through there that we've cleaned up, um, that's where most of the tractors will fit back in. Um, as for tractor parts, well, this is bits and pieces we found. I'll sort of Rick, if he found some, bring them over here and We've got the seat cushions and panels and tractor parts all in there. And all out through here. So we've got to sort all that out yet and find appropriate appropriate parts or places for it all. So yeah, easier said than done. So there you go. That's the shed. Um, it's coming along nicely. There's still an awful lot of work to do. 
Um, yeah, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. Rain wasn't built in the day. So the next few videos will probably just be shed related, but yeah, I'll, I will try and go for a walk around agro trend next week and um, give you a look at that. So there you go. We'll catch you all next week, eh? See ya.